Okay, so through the miracle of editing, we have now soaked our seed for an hour and we're ready to start sowing. So I'm going to do a quick version of it here, uh, but this is something you might want to do closer to a sink. So what I've got is my jars that have soaked for an hour. I've got a little strainer here to, to strain these quite easily. And then just a, a, a pot that the water will go into for now. And then here, these are the cell packs that are going to cover each of these. And what I did is I, I water, I filled them with soil, I watered them, and then I weighed them also because I want them all to be about the same weight. So each one is pushing up the same amount of weight here. Uh, these are about 12 to 13 ounces each. I've been hoping to get it up to a pound, but it seems that's about as much water as they want to hold. And that's actually, that's going to be sufficient for, for our, our needs here. All right, need some coffee to keep me going. So. Starting on our 6.2, it's very, very simple here. I'm going to drain these. I'm going to have seed in both the strainer, probably. Just going to move that. Uh, strainer as well as the cup. So these are going to dump out of here. Get the stuff out of the cup. Make sure some didn't fall into the other. And then I'm going to spread these around as if I was going to, um, if this was a re regular tray seeds are jumping around a little bit so I'm going to be pretty careful and you can see already now I can see already like this is a ridiculously small amount of seed but that's the idea is to really show what the range does and we may be actually somewhat surprised by uh, how much that actually grows so okay so here's number two Actually, I'm going to put this into here seed goes into there And then four, you, you, I don't think you'll, you'll be able to see, I'll show you the seeding rates afterwards. And we'll speed this up a bit. This here, uh, this one here as I work my way there, that uh, cell pack is the one that has my current seeding rate uh, on it. So it's the one that has what I know is a fairly good rate already. So. I'll be able to get a good look at things. Some of these jars are a little harder to get the seed out of. It's a good, good little thing to think about there. The deeper jars make the seed a little more a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, one of the reasons I like doing these videos live is because I think it's really important to, for you to see people um, making mistakes or figuring stuff out as they go because that really is the way we learn I don't want to present this perfectly edited video where everything goes perfectly smooth because that I can assure you is not a representation of my life so do a little bit of job of dumping that out as you can see we're just about halfway here just going through and laying each of the seeds out. And I can already see with each of these this, uh, the, the density on the tray and how it's differing. At this point, I'm starting to see like, okay, this amount of seed starts to make more sense. This is more familiar. So here we this is 11.2 grams. Being really, really careful to get every single seed out of there. Just going to move that. So everything thus far has been what is projected to be uh, not quite enough of a sewing rate. Though I think the stuff that's close on either end of the known sewing rate is going to be probably pretty, pretty equivalent. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see our results to be sure that well spread out and then our final one on this side okay, so what we're doing here so we've got now all all of our low uh, low uh, sewing rates done on this side and then this one here is what uh, is our sort of standard or what are basically our check is this one has a known value this is a seeding rate that I'm already using that I've already had good results from. And so it's gonna be the standard by which I, I measure the other things. And it's gonna help me determine whether or not I should be increasing my uh, sewing rate or not. 
go. Make sure that's good. And I'm just really trying to make sure the seeds don't spill into each of the other trays and that they're not right on the edges as well because those ones aren't going to germinate. Okay, now I'm going to come back this way. Now this one here is actually our highest seeding rate because I did a serpentine style here, but that doesn't matter. The thing I am trying to do is get all of these out of here as quickly as possible. Um, I think for something to soak a few minutes longer is totally fine, but I don't want it to be too big of a difference between the first tray or the first soaked seed and the last soaked seed. So this here is actually in my most heavily uh, seeded uh, cell pack. Very, very heavy, lots of overlapping seeds, almost like a layer and a half basically here of seed. Clearly way too much there but the question often is is it more important for you to get the most value out of your seed or for you to get the most value out of your space now what I mean by that is our return per seed might be better here but our yield might be best about here so we're using more seed and our seed to yield ratio is a bit lower but for the space we're using, we're getting a higher yield. Um, and I'm all about, we forget about the importance of space, especially in compact systems. So I may find something has a lower seed to, um, has a lower seed to uh, harvest ratio, uh, but that would actually have a, a higher um, uh, seed to soil ratio. You're using the same amount of soil in each of these uh, and the same amount of space. Uh, but just a bit of a differ differing amount of seed. And if the seed is relatively inexpensive, as it is with wheatgrass, then that's the cost I'm worried least about. And I would actually potentially choose a sowing rate that allows me to maximize both my space and my soil uh, as much as the seed. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, so continuing here. And this is still, like I can still see these sowing rates are really, really high here because they're so dense there's a lot of overlapping seeds so i'm trying to really spread that out but i can see it's declining here and it's a really yeah it's really interesting just to see this and as this part of this process as the sowing rates kind of start in both cases start to make more and more sense as i move along there we go so one more here these get a little easier to spread out as they get less dense. Here. Try to get into the corners there. So this method of really stirring the seed around and then dumping it out quickly easily gets all the seed out of that jar so I don't have to worry about digging in the jar again. The strainer has seen lots of use, so it's got a bit of a lip, which makes it a little harder to get the seed out of there, but way easier than digging it out of the jar. Okay. And then our last one here. So we're just, just above our regular seeding rate in around here. So our first tray is done here, our first rep. We're going to have two rep replicates here, or two blocks as they're often called. Okay. So that there is done. So I'm going to just hold this up and give you a look at this so you can see what it looks like with all these different seeding ratios. So it's going low seeding rate, higher, 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 highest. So lowest to highest this way. So hopefully you can see that well enough to get a sense of that. This is my lowest, this is my highest seeding right there. I don't want to tip it too far because I don't want them to fall out. Now, here's the next part of the process. I'm going to pull these guys out of here. And I thought to myself I should separate these cell packs before I do this, and I did not do that, which makes this a little more difficult. Now, as I talked about before, one thing I want to do is randomize these. I can't have them all in the same order in every tray. That just doesn't make, you just can't do that in research. You've really got to make sure you've got things randomized so you can control for different things like environment or light. So I'm separating all these. 
going to be a little more careful because I don't want to spill the seed out of them. These ones here. Okay. So now I'm just kind of moving these all around. some patterns emerge, so just being a little more mindful of spreading these out. Right. And the other thing I need to do is make sure all my labels are facing the outside. There we go. This one here. This one here. It's going to do a little more mixing because I just see some sort of to see some concentration of heavier seeded trays there. Okay. So those are moved around. Okay. So I got things fairly well mixed up there. Okay. Now, oh, let me mix that one. Okay. Now I'm going to give these a little bit of water. Let's get these watered in. They don't need a lot. Ready. Now the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm just coming over here, is I talked earlier about making a map. And so the map is because I want to make sure that if my labels for some reason uh, come off, that uh, I know which tray is which. And I have this label, this the front. And if you took a look at the, at the write-up in the data sheet that I sent, then you'll see that there was a, and I'm just pulling this up as we go, um, uh, I, I put a map in the spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do is basically have a backup there. And that way, if something happens, and something always happens, something always goes wrong, and I've done tons of experiments like this and it's just always something that happens. So this is um, rep one. Oh, actually this is rep two. I want to make sure I've got them there. I've got everything labeled here. So this is front wheatgrass rep number two. And this is the front. So I'm going to do it this way, just the way things are. So that's the front here. And then as I go along, I can go, this is 13.6, And then I will come on this side, and I will start at this side here again, and go 6.2, and this is grams of seed per tray, 17.4. 11.2, 12.4, 14.9, and 8.7. So now I have a map for for this, and that way, if for something for some reason something goes wrong, uh, I can refer to the map, and I know which is the front, which is here. It's labeled there, and uh, I don't have to worry about the the label coming off. Just the label being on there itself is sufficient. Okay, so next step here is taking my other cell packs and placing them on top. So these are our cover trays, basically, as we talk about in regular production. These are going to sit on top here like this. They're going to nest in there quite nicely. Now, one of my concerns is there's going to be a bit too much moisture in this whole system, which is another one of those things that I'll sort of list in my sort of uh, research limitations or sources of error. But I'm hoping for the best here. Because uh, the, the, the wet soil here isn't actually touching the soil below. It is, um, it is, there is a cell pack in between. So I'm going to bring these closer to the outer edge because the inner part here will be better covered up. So we won't have to worry about things drying out there as much. Okay, so this is basically ready to go. So that's one of our reps of sunflower done, or of wheatgrass done, sorry. And it's going to go up here. Quite a heavy tray, so be careful when moving it. 
and that is now ready to go. So what I'm going to do right away is my second tray of wheatgrass here, and then once all the wheatgrass is done, I'm going to use these same jars here to soak the sunflower and do that stuff all over again. So we'll take a look at, look at the whole setup once it's all done. I'm basically going to do what I just did three more times. You don't need to see all that, but what I'll do is I'll get that all done and then show you the setup here and just uh, do a little bit of a quick review of what we've done. And then what we'll do is we'll start thinking about what our next steps are going to be. And then it'll be a few days before we start looking at our crop and taking our first measurements.